Hello science fans and welcome to Shiensha. Why do we go hungry? Why do we even get bored? Why did we evolve to have religion? Why is makeup part of human culture? Why are babies so cute? Why do we think that aliens exist? Why do we ask questions? The Shiensha Why series will dissect some of our most head-scratching why questions teasing out the scientific principles from historical records, conspiracy theories, and mass media. Join us in today's episode that asks the question, Why boredom? Hey, bored ka na ba? Nalulongkot? At walang makausap? Well, why don't you watch this episode and find out why exactly we get bored? There's no universally accepted definition for boredom. But whatever it is, researchers argue it is not simply another name for depression or apathy. It seems to be a specific mental state that people find unpleasant. A lack of stimulation that leaves them craving relief with a host of behavioral, medical, and social consequences. References to boredom date back to the ancient Greek philosophers, but the word itself did not enter the written English language at least until 1766. In Tagalog, a rough translation of boredom is the word inip, but the word inip also has implications towards being impatient or the struggle of waiting for something to happen, which isn't exactly boredom per se. In Ilocano, they have the terms agsasadot, nabannog, and makauma. But agsasadot could also be translated as lazy, nabannog as tired, and makauma as impatient. In Bisaya, though, they have the term laay. And so far, I believe laay is the most direct translation of the word boredom into any Filipino language. Maybe you can share some translations of the word boredom in your own local language? Share them in the comments section below. But no matter the language, philosophers and writers alike have described the feeling of boredom as a desire for desires. But is this feeling truly benign? Or can you actually die of boredom? In studies of binge eating, for example, boredom is one of the most frequent triggers, along with feelings of depression and anxiety. In a study of distractibility using a driving simulator, people prone to boredom typically drove at higher speeds than other participants. They also took longer to respond to unexpected hazards and drifted more frequently over the center line. Surveys worldwide have also seen that more than 50% of teenagers who tend to get bored easily end up being addicted to smoking, alcohol, and illegal drugs. Boredom even accounts for about 25% of variation in student achievement, which is about the same percentage as is attributed to innate intelligence. Thus, boredom is something that requires significant consideration. On a starkly different tangent, Journalist and podcaster Manoush Zumarodi actually claims that boredom could be a blessing. It turns out that when you get bored, you ignite a network in your brain called the default mode. And it is in this default mode where we get to tap this amazing potential of our brain. And this will remain unused unless we give ourselves the opportunity to get bored. The experience of boredom seems to be a curse to some, but a luxury for others. But what does science have to say about this universal human experience? The official beginnings of the scientific study of boredom dates back to around 1885, when British polymath Francis Galton published a short note in the journal Nature. The publication was titled The Measure of Fidget and was his account of how restless audience members behaved during a scientific meeting. <laughs> but decades passed with only a few people taking interest in the subject. Perhaps it is because of the perception of how trivial the feeling of boredom is. That began to change in 1986, 
when Norman Sundberg and Richard Farmer of the University of Oregon in Eugene published their Boredom Proneness Scale, the first systematic way for researchers to measure boredom. The BPS launched the creation of other boredom scales, and it was also the catalyst that allowed the scientific community to take the study of boredom more seriously. And finally, it was also able to connect the feeling of boredom to other mental health issues, such as anxiety and depression. However, the BPS has some widely acknowledged flaws. It is inherently subjective because it is a self-reported measure. It measures susceptibility to boredom, but not the intensity of the feeling in any given situation. Scientists are still trying to hash out how to improve the BPS. But in 2013, the Multidimensional State Boredom Scale, or MSBS, was developed. Unlike BPS, which focuses on the individual's personality, the MSBS can look at how bored a person is at a given moment. And this could actually reveal other facets of what boredom actually is. Washington State University has also been doing some research into the physiology of boredom. And the findings are really quite interesting. Their findings give us a peek on how the brain works whenever a person feels bored. And they're also starting to develop proactive means of managing boredom. The researchers state that boredom does represent a real issue for mental health and has been linked to both anxiety and depression, both major mental health conditions. There is a consensus that boredom itself is not the problem. It is the person's reaction to boredom. And poor reactions can lead to worse mental health issues. In the study, the research team initially believed there was a hardwiring difference in the brains of people who react negatively to boredom versus those individuals who experience no ill effects when they are bored. However, initial tests using the EEG to measure the participants' brain activity proved them wrong. An EEG is a test that detects abnormalities in the electrical activity of your brain. During the procedure, electrodes placed on your skull detect tiny electrical charges that result from the activity of your brain cells. The charges are amplified and appear as a graph on a computer screen, which can then be interpreted by an expert. Researchers from the Washington State University previously thought that individuals who react more negatively to boredom would have different wave patterns compared to those who do not. But the results says otherwise. This led the researchers to revisit a previous hypothesis that links higher tendencies to get bored with avoidant disposition. In a nutshell, avoidant personality disorder is characterized by extreme feelings of social inhibition, inadequacy, and sensitivity to negative criticism and rejection. Yet the symptoms involve more than simply being shy or socially awkward. Avoidant personality disorder causes significant problems that affect the ability to interact with others and maintain relationships in day-to-day -day life. About 1% of the general population has avoidant personality disorder. Considering the links between boredom, anxiety, and depression, coping mechanisms to help us deal positively with the emotion are needed. However, before that, we must first solve the mystery of what the brain looks like when we're feeling bored. To do this, research subjects were given a repetitive, truly boring task to map brain responses on an EEG. In assessing the brainwave maps obtained, scientists focused on the levels of activity in the left and right frontal lobes of the brain. And this was because these regions were active for significantly different reasons. The left frontal part becomes more active when an individual is looking for stimulation from a situation by thinking about something different. Conversely, the right frontal part of the brain becomes more active when an individual experiences negative emotions or states of anxiety. The results showed that individuals who were more prone to boredom on a daily basis had their right brain active when performing the repetitive tasks while individuals who had their left brain active 
for those who are more able to cope positively with the feelings of boredom. On the biochemical side, some researchers argue that boredom is accompanied with low serotonin levels, just like depression. Serotonin is popular for being the hormone responsible for a sense of well-being and happiness. Individuals with low levels of serotonin need higher levels of stimuli in order to feel excitement and are thus more prone to boredom and also towards anxiety and depression. However, low levels of serotonin can also be related to addiction, alcoholism, excessive eating disorder, and compulsive gambling. Considering all that, the next step is to create clear strategies to allow people to cope better with states of boredom. Interestingly, one clue that led the research team to a potential answer is the respondent who uses Christmas songs to deal with boring tasks. It seems that doing or thinking of things that keep you engaged is better than focusing on the feeling of boredom itself. Of course, that is much easier said than done. One way to help in focusing our brain activity is through meditation. Some research suggests that practicing meditation may reduce blood pressure, symptoms of irritable bowel syndrome, anxiety, depression, and insomnia. Meditation is scientifically considered a safe practice that can improve both your mental and physical well-being. However, please do not use it as an alternative to conventional health care or to use it as an excuse to postpone an appointment with a medical expert about a medical problem. If you are in the Philippines and you are experiencing anxiety, confusion, and depression, you may consult with the National Mental Health Crisis Hotline. Shown on screen now are their numbers, and we will also link these contact information in the description box of this video. And so, science has spoken. Boredom is a universal feeling, a state of weariness and restlessness through lack of interest. As benign as the emotion seems, it can be dangerous for some as it can lead others to addictive activity that can lead to sickness and even death. And yet for others, it can also unleash a fount of creativity. Brainwaves of people who get bored easily are not different from those who do not. So it's not boredom that's the problem per se, instead it is the reaction to it. Left brain dominant individuals tend to look for creative outlets for their boredom, while right brain dominant individuals can shift to dangerous anxiety attack. Low levels of the hormone serotonin can also tip the scales from boredom to depression. Thank you for watching today's episode of Shiencia's Y series. I hope you were able to learn something from our short discussion on the perceptions and science behind the emotion of boredom. And I hope you weren't bored also. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to our channel. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please don't hesitate to message me, your resident Filipina scientist, in the comments section below. Thank you very much, and see you around!